Welcome to The Mystery of Life. I'm Jo. And I'm Johnny. And today we're asking, what happened to Amelia Earhart? Well, missing, didn't she? Yeah, I think it's fair to say this is a pretty famous mystery and possibly one of the longest that we've been, we've done. Not the longest, but one of them. It's really stood the test of time, people wanting to know what happened to her. Oh, you meant you meant the longest over a period of time. I thought you meant the longest as in like, oh, that's long. No, I meant like she's been missing for like 100 years. Well, she crashed a plane, didn't she? To me, the only mystery is where. Well, let's let's get into it. Let's. I'll, I'll paint a picture. I'm just going to tell you a couple of brief facts, things that she did in in her life before this, because I didn't know any of this, and I think it's actually quite cool. So she was born in 1897 in Atchison, Kansas. Do you know what else was in Atchison, Kansas? Fun fact here. No. The Sally House. Oh. Yeah. So you can go to Kansas in Atchison and see the Sally House and the Amelia Earhart Museum <laughs> all in one trip. So. Dad was a lawyer. Mum came from old money. They moved to California and in 1920, she had her first flight lesson with another female pilot, Anita Snook. And in 1921, she bought her own plane. In 1922, she became the first woman to fly solo over 14,000 feet. She broke records for speed, altitude, distance and endurance. And in 1928, she became the first woman to cross the Atlantic as a passenger. This was a big deal in 1928. I was surprised that this was the one that made headlines. But yeah, that was like just being on the plane was a huge deal. That wasn't for women. No, apparently not. (laughs) She was an amazing woman. I just, everyone's acting like there's this deep mystery. Like, oh, how could she possibly have gone missing in a 1920s plane by herself trying to break break the record for traversing the globe? I mean, how could she go missing? Well, I thought that, but I have several theories. So... They're all wackadoodle. (laughs) Planes crash in the sea and tiny planes in the sea are near impossible to find. All right, well, save this for when we get to the bit where she actually crashes or or does she? She wrote a book about flying the Atlantic as a passenger, married the publisher in 1931. And in 1932, she made the trip alone. And that, to me, was the bigger deal. Yeah, that's massive. When planes weren't very good, flying that far by yourself. It took her 15 hours and she was the second person ever to complete the flight, obviously the first woman. The plane also suffered a leak in the fuel take. The engine shot flames at one point, but people just said that proved her resilience. (laughs) Yeah, that's what being a pilot was like in the 1920s. Your plane stuck like caught fire. uh, And you just had to be like, okay, right. Okay, okay. uh, (laughs) Just got to deal with it. Like you've got no... Technology behind you, you're up there in the sky, no one can help you. And she loved that, the fact that you're up there in the sky. And it's like, I can't, I think that's awful. Don't get me wrong, I will fly. But like to be a pilot in her position and her time, I would have been terrified. And I've, the, the achievements I've just listed to you are like nothing in comparison to what she's actually done. That's a very small yeah, subset. Yeah, but if you think that the did. alternative is to sit in the house making babies and food for a man. Yeah. I'd be up in the plane. Yeah, apparently her own mother was criticised for letting her and her sister wear bloomers instead of a pretty dress when they were growing up because they were like out playing with the insects and stuff, which was like not what little girls did in 1937 or 1920. No, they were trained to be slightly older women. Yeah. (laughs) So around the world. She wanted to fly around the world and she made her first attempt in 1937. She was, sorry, in March 1937. She was accompanied by Fred Noonan and uh, Harry Manning. So Fred Noonan was the navigator and Harry Manning was a highly skilled radio operator. She took off from Oakland, California and flew to Honolulu, Hawaii. They got to Hawaii okay, but the plane needed servicing because it had struggled with like various issues on that, what we would now deem a relatively small trip, but was relatively treacherous for them. When they tried to take off from Hawaii, there were further issues. So the trip was cancelled and the plane was sent for repairs. To me, that would be be like, right, we barely made it to Hawaii. Let's let's not bother. <laughs> but no. Do you see what's piling up here before she goes missing? Problems with the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, it's a mystery. What happened? No. I, mm. Ooh. Yeah, but I thought this though. I genuinely did. And then when I got into this, it's like it's actually not as clear cut as I thought. Okay. You're sitting there thinking, what has she read? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, so second attempt. Because we know nothing. We, we know kn- some stuff. Yeah, we know we we know the places. Well, uh, okay, we right. know the places she went, and we know the last place she left off from, and we know her last radio message. We don't know anything after that, so that everyone is just assuming stuff. Okay, well, her second attempt journey was expected to be around twenty nine thousand miles. Also, not to poo poo her, right? But if you're having to stop the plane every ten hours, service it, fuel it. I don't, you're not flying around the world. You're flying very yeah, short distances, having a break, and then flying a very short distance again. At that time. No, I know, but it's not flying around the world, is it? To us now, no. But the, it's a matter of endurance as well, because it wasn't like she was having five days off in between. Otherwise, everybody would be doing it. 
No, and not everyone had means and money. It was extremely expensive. Yeah, she did. She did get a lot of funding. But but, but that's that's it was more a feat of money and and engineering than it was a feat of personal achievement. Because okay, right. Well, she flew in a twin engine Lockheed Electra ten. You could fit ten passengers in, but this time it was just Amelia and Fred because Harry Manning had taken leave had taken a leave of absence to take part in the trip where they only made it as far as Hawaii and decided there was too many delays and issues and he didn't want to be involved. So fair, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like this is a pain in the ass. Yeah. This isn't a, um, like this isn't a fun adventure. This is just a pain in the ass. Yeah. Well, mostly it worked. So Did it? they set well for the for the most part. Did it? <laughs> right, right, right. May 21st, 1937, they set off and this time again from Oakland, California, but they flew towards Miami instead of west towards Hawaii. And things went well. They stopped 30 times in 42 days to refuel. I'll put a full list of the flight path on the blog. There's no point in listing it now. Um, but I mean, like three of those were in America. So <laughs> just going across America. The 30th stop was La A, Papua New Guinea. Uh, and there was just two more stops before the final stop back in Oakland, which would have been mission complete. Planes that are flying are relatively safe. Pl- I, actually, plane, it's funny you should mention that because I want to take a minute to talk about planes in general. Planes that are taking off and landing, that's when 99% of the troubles happen. So how many times in 40 days did she have to take off and land that plane? 30. So that is an extreme amount of times in a short period of time. So yeah. she's the chance of her having an accident are much huger than the normal transport plane because it only takes off and lands on, on that trip once. For comparison, I started to think, well, that's a long time. And we knew we know now that you can fly. It doesn't take 42 days to go around the world. But just for comparison, to fly from Oakland to La A, La, I don't know how you say that. It is La A, but I still don't think I'm pronouncing it right. In New Guinea, you can do it in you can do it in a, about a day and a half with three stops. Now that's traumatic enough for me. A day and a half flying would be like, oh, you can. Do, I think you can do it with less stop. You probably can if you have like a private plane or whatever. But I'm talking like if you were to buy a ticket right now, oh, if right. you were to go onto like Virgin Airways or British Atlantic or whoever, you can get to British Australia Airways. in like two stops. So I don't know how you can get to. Uh, well, that very much depends on the airports and the people running it. That's what I'm saying. So Papua New Guinea to Oakland. I mean, if you the, include the Concorde took, in our list of, and other and other jets. Then it, it's minutes. Yeah, but I'm talking right now. If you was going on the internet and buy a ticket, you could do it in less than two days. Mm-hmm. But even that sounds fairly traumatic. I would not like to do it for 42 days. Well, I don't know why you'd be going to Papua New no Guinea. No one That's... wants to stop anyway, do they? Even just a flight, you don't want to stop. It's just um, a pain. Well, I once did a, a transatlantic budget flight, and I can tell you the stopover was the best thing I ever had. <laughs> Twelve hours in what, like, in the same leg space as an EasyJet plane. Yeah, but I did eight hours on a Virgin Atlantic flight and it was much better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So on that flight... Same journey. Trust I me. went from, from like yeah. Stansted to Orlando. Yeah, yeah, I went from... I, I, I went from Gatwick. That, well, that was fun. Yeah, it might have been Gatwick. Anyway, one of the London Gatwick ones Gatwick to Green Bay. <laughs> Spent two hours in Green Bay Airport and then flew another four hours to Florida. But see, even then, the whole you did journey, it in less than a day. The whole journey was 20 hours. Yeah. Including, but that included like getting up. And we see that as a faff. We see that as a longer version of doing it. I had some strangers sleeping on my shoulder. It was the (laughs) nightmare. I suppose she only had to deal with Fred. But apparently, when I was researching this, Fred had a bit of a drinking problem. And apparently, she'd when she'd contacted her husband at some of the stops, she had like complained about Fred. So it doesn't sound like the journey itself was that pleasant. Wouldn't you have put more effort into picking someone you really liked before? Maybe she was terrible company. Maybe. Stuck in this tin can, I'm getting drunk. Like, she's flying it. What's he doing? Looking at some gauges. You can do that drunk. Also, it took her th- um, nearly four days to fly from Oakland to Miami. You can do that in about five hours now on a normal, like, passenger flight. Just shows you how far we've come. I just thought that was interesting. Now, so, Amelia and Fred are leaving La A, and they've done about 22,000 miles, and they've got about 7,000 left to get back to Oakland. The next stop was Howland Island, which was about 2,500 miles away and expected to take around 18 hours. Okay. There was a radio operator in La A, La A, Harry Balfour, who had a schedule to communicate with Amelia and Fred. I keep forgetting about poor old Fred. It's really just about Amelia, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, on this particular leg of the trip. Like so. everything with women. <laughs> 
actually feel bad for Fred. Like, no one talks about him. Even at the beginning here, you were like, Amelia, on her own. But she wasn't on her own. Like, she had Fred. Even though he may have been a pain from the all sounds of things, she wasn't on her own. (laughs) Well, he probably thought he was on a jolly, didn't he? Like, (laughs) she's got this, I'm just going to get pissed. (laughs) Plus, drinking at the... I saw a video from the 1980s in America. I think it was the 80s or the 70s, when they were introducing the drink driving ban. Right. And they're honest to God, on the news, people were going, it's un-American. Like, why shouldn't I be able to finish my day and have a beer on the way home? Like, the, the culture of drinking has only recently gotten like, ooh. Yeah. Like, even when I was growing up, drink driving, oh, like, yeah. that was just a bit naughty. Yeah. Like, and the police would be like, don't do that again. Yeah, absolutely. And then further back you go, like, yeah, they like there was literally about 10 people they were interviewing about this drink driving ban on, across all walks of life, and none of them could understand it. I'd be interested to know if he flew the plane drunk at any point. Because like, if it's an 18-hour flight, you'd expect that Amelia might have a bit of a rest while he took over. Once you're off the ground, keeping it going in a straight line isn't the most complicated of tasks. Okay, well, Harry was supposed to, he was on the ground in New Guinea and he was supposed to communicate, send transmissions to Amelia every hour. But shortly after they had taken off, Harry noticed that the headwinds were significantly stronger than anyone had expected. And he tried three times over a two hour period to reach Amelia, but it's not known if Amelia ever received these transmissions. Mm, she flew a dodge, she flew a broken ass plane into dodgy weather. Well, there's nothing wrong with it's the plane. It's a as mystery! Far as we, there was nothing wrong with the plane as far as we know. Well, this is the same plane that by the time it got to Hawaii it was knackered last yeah, time. I'm not. sorted that out. Have they? (laughs) Well, apparently, these headwinds will affect fuel consumption and flight speed. Mm -hmm. And at around 2.18pm, Harry received a transmission from Amelia, which appeared to have been blocked earlier. Now, I tried to figure out what they meant by blocked. I did quite a lot of research into communication in 1937. I think they meant physically blocked. Um, Yeah, well... (laughs) I don't think any one person was blocking it. No, I I, I meant an object, like a mountain. Yeah, yeah, it, it she was She wouldn't tricky. have been flying very high. No, and when I say transmissions, it literally was like messages. It was always like messages sent. It wasn't like a two-way radio, like a bit like a walkie-talkie, almost like it is today. It was like, flying over here, doing well. Yeah. Over. Yeah, exactly that, yeah. So the message, Amelia's message gave her speed at 140 knots and altitude of 7,000 feet. However, la- an hour later, she reports being at 10,000 feet. But both times, she seemed calm and like you know, wasn't alarmed and didn't mention these headwinds. So if she had figured out they were happening, she was fine. We also know that Amelia had remarked on how thick the cloud coverage was that day. And people thought she might have been flying that high to avoid like those clouds or maybe some mountains. Like we don't know exactly why she went, climbed to 10,000 feet. She wasn't expected to. Yeah, like they'll often do it for weather and whatnot. If they can get above the clouds, then especially at that time when I doubt air traffic was much of an issue. No, I can't imagine that it was. You'd no. have to be really unlucky to bump into another plane at that time. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, again, she set the record previously, didn't she, for 14,000 feet. Uh, now, regular cruising altitude is somewhere between thirty one and 36,000 feet. And that's just, like, because they've figured out that's the best optimum fuel consumption. Yeah, there's less wind resistance. Yeah. There. Yeah. They can, we can go higher now. We have, you know, we can oh, go yeah, significantly we can go, higher than that. Space. Well, yeah, but, I mean, like, even, like fighter jets will regularly... Oh, yeah, there's, there's plenty of jets stuff, that will, but... like, sit on the edge of space and go along as well. Like, right up there on the edge of the atmosphere. Sorry, not the edge of space. That's scary. Imagine, imagine parachuting from the edge of... <laughs> that, that, was, that must have been terrifying. <laughs> okay, so they were due to land on, the, on Howland Island and the United States Coast Guard had actually sent the Itasca, which was a 250-foot ship, uh, to Howland Island to prepare for Amelia's landing. Because obviously this was a big deal for America you know, to say that they've one of their women had done it first. The ship was especially good at communication, so it could use two-way radio commu- communication to speak to Amelia once they were near enough. It was able to use its boilers to create thick plumes of smoke visible above the horizon, and it could create homing signals and could use various frequencies for transmissions and communications. It really was a communication ship. You know, it ferried passengers about a lot. Like, it knew what it was doing. It was nice of the Coast Guard to send it. However, Amelia was never like, never able to establish two-way radio communication with the ship and they don't know why. That is a bit of a cause of controversy. But like you said, I guess it just didn't work. Flew the wrong way, wasn't in range. This, she didn't have GPS keeping her track and it was maps no, and bits of paper. And... The Itasca thinks she must have gone close enough because they did hear her transmissions in what seemed to be pretty much real time. That's why it's controversial that they don't know why she wasn't able to... I'm guessing she had to do something Also, she lost a radio operator. Yeah, but she still had Fred. They obviously knew what they were doing. They'd landed 30 other times. Well, a minute ago, Fred was a liability. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> At one point, they were so the Itasca crew were so convinced that Amelia and Fred were nearby that he actually left the radio room to go outside and look for the plane. 
Like he was convinced they were that like close to him. So? Uh, they requested that the crew use Morse code. That didn't work either. Uh, basically, Amelia and Fred were struggling to pin down exactly where they had to land. They were struggling to find Howland Island. Amelia sent a message that said, we must be on you, but we cannot see you. Gas is running low, been unable to reach you by radio. We are flying at a thousand feet. And then at 8.43 a.m., Amelia sent her final message. And I have to say that I got a bit upset at this point because like, it was kind of horrible. She's just out there, like knowing that her plane's going to go down. Oh, yeah. And her message was, we are on the line, 157337. We will repeat this message. We will repeat this on 6210 killer cycles. Wait. But the, never, the message was never repeated on any of the frequencies. And Amelia's voice at this point was now described as frantic. It sounds like the plane's crashing. Well, it seems like basically they just couldn't find the island. They got lost. It happens when you're using, like, it's really easy, even with today technology for pilots to get completely lost. Yeah, they have spoken a lot, haven't they, in modern um, kind of like crash investigations and stuff about pilots becoming, how easy it is for them to become confused about where they are and how there's like even conditions that make them really wholly believe they know where they are and what direction they're going in. Even with all the modern equipment you've got, even when stuff is beeping at you today and telling you, no, you're going to crash, no, you need to turn around, the pilots are like, no, clearly we're going this way. Yeah, part of the training now is teaching pilots to ignore their instincts and listen. 100% 100% to what the, that's telling them. Yeah, and of course, Amelia had none of that. No, and like, there's so many phenomena we've discovered that can, like, she might have been flying upside down for a very long period of time and not even known it. Like your, in, like, your inner ear only makes you feel off balance when the fluid moves. So if, you sp- if you're, you you spend a sustained period of time upside down to the side or anywhere, your, your ear fluid settles. So you think you're flying perfect, like you feel like you're flying perfectly level, but you're upside, actually upside down or wow. heading downwards, upwards. Like you, you can be completely wrong about what you feel like, what direction you feel like you're going in. Imagine that. It happens to us all the time. Oh, no, it doesn't. I don't feel like I've been upside down very many times and not known it. No, but that kind of sensation where you feel like you're moving one way, but actually you're going another and... I do take a lot of tumbles. What, what cause travel sickness and things <laughs> like that. Like your brain trying to understand it. Mm. Well, what should have been a celebrated landing quickly became a desperate search and rescue attempt. The Itasca already being on the water meant they could get out and look pretty much straight away. Five days later, US battleship Colorado joined the search and shortly after, USS Lexington also joined from San Diego and searched until July 18th. See, it's big, isn't it? You've said it before. We'll say it again. See, yeah, it's big. I've said this before. Now, sceptics believe that there should have been 24 hours of fuel, not the 20 hours that she used. Can I remind you of the um, headwinds that she encountered say, that yeah. probably used up that fuel? Yeah, we and don't... later on, the Jet Propulsion Centre at Caltech University said that due to the headwinds and altitude climb, for whatever reason, it made sense that they were running low on fuel. And it's likely that they, in fact, would have run out at the time where they believed to have disappeared, like, assuming that message was pretty much real time. Yeah, there is no mystery. With uh, all The well, only mystery is where well, Amelia Hart crashed, but... Mm. That, like, that's difficult to pinpoint because of lack of information. It's not a conspiracy. It's just we don't know. Well, it might be a conspiracy. Why? Okay, right. I mean, obviously the first option is they just fell into the ocean and we can't find them because they're in the ocean. Can I say first and most likely? <laughs> Fred and Amelia were lost and confused. She's Okay, she's, and to be honest, let's be honest, pretty fucking scared. She's probably. undertaking something that had never been done before. Well, someone had done it before, but higher up. So like not around the equator. So the, the miles were less. Well, either way, but she's doing something that's untested. Yeah. Unproven. Yeah. The likelihood is it crashed. I'm sorry. But that is it. Well, I think we know it crashed, but where did it crash? And did it crash into the sea or onto land? No, it definitely crashed in the sea. Mm. No, because land would have <laughs> created, like, unless it was a deserted island, there would have been witnesses and people that can say. Well, there say, was a deserted island. Funny you should mention that. But just that going in the theory that they're in the sea, you're right. I do think that's probably the most likely. Howland Island was only a mile and a half long. So it was pretty hard to pinpoint if you didn't like, know exactly where it was. Like if you throw a dart at a dartboard and 99% of it's blue, you're going to hit the blue bit most of the time. I do wonder though, like why would they pick such a tricky spot to land on? It probably isn't a tricky spot when you know it's there. They just got lost. Well, they reckon as well that the maps they had might have put it six miles out of its actual location, which is huge when you're trying to look for it. If they knew they were running out of fuel as well, I find it odd that they didn't send like another message to say, we don't know where you are, we're, we're going to go down. That's, like, what she, that's what her last message was. That's what uh, we're no, on the line means. Yeah, but I think she, she was meant, given her final heading. Like oh, I can't believe she wouldn't like say goodbye or something. Like we, we're going to go busy, into the water. <laughs> she's busy trying to not crash the plane. They don't. Pilots do not talk when they're in an emergency. Well, 
if she, assuming she couldn't see any other land around her, yes, she would have gone into the ocean. And the Pacific Ocean, uh, which surrounded Howland Island, is 18,000 feet deep. And you know how I have trouble with size. So to put that into context, an American football field is 360 feet. So that's approximately 50 American football fields deep. Mm-hmm. 50. 50 American football fields deep. The mountains under the ocean are far bigger than the mountains above it. Everest well, that's the other is, thing. Everest is nothing. It's not like a swimming pool down there. It's not like a flat surface with clear no, water. No, it could be literally anywhere. So I, I don't know why th- these people have to reach for like, oh my God, it must be the government because how could we lose a plane in the middle of nowhere with no rate, with no technology whatsoever to find it? Well, I think that's why I like planes like MH370 are a mystery because you can understand how Amelia went missing because yeah, that's you had what I mean. nothing. But yet we also, even with all the technology that we've got today, we still don't even know no, There's a lot of MH370 things that happen is. to make MH370 a mystery. Yeah, this yeah, isn't I'm talking, a, let's assume it went in the sea. The reason we can't find things in the sea remains. That's the same in 1937 or today. Yeah. It's just too hard. <laughs> yeah, it requires a lot, a lot of luck and a little bit of knowledge. We're only just finding Spanish ships that sunk Yeah, with, with millions of pounds worth of gold on. And I don't mean pounds as in, I don't mean pounds as in the, the currency. I mean pounds as in the, the weight. weight. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, like, people think we know roughly where she was, but like you said, I mean, they could have been flying upside down. They could have turned around and gone back the other way. For, the head, for the heading they, they gave we her could have, know that. The heading she gave could have been wrong. Yeah. Like, anything could have happened. But I did think, and I'm not the only one that thought this, even if she did get turned around, what if she happened upon land? It's still very difficult to try, land a plane without a landing strip. Well, this brings us to Gardner Island, which yeah. was didn't have a landing strip, but had land that you could have almost used as a landing strip and had a lagoon in the middle that you could have crash landed into far easier than crash landing. Cool, is there the a ground. plane in that lagoon? Because um, we can look in the lagoon. No. So she didn't do that then? No, but then I thought, well, what if she crash landed in the sea and was able to swim to this island if she was pretty near it anyway? Maybe. Gardner Island is now called Nikamaroro. It was about 350 nautical miles away from Howard Island and it was also along the line 157337, which is a navigational line of position. And it was expected that they would move along that line to try and find Howland Island so they might have found Gardner Island almost in, in a happy accident. Now, the US Navy did fly over the island, but they said they couldn't see any any signs of a crash landing. But I thought, well, no, but if they crashed into the sea, you wouldn't necessarily see the plane. But they did say there was they saw signs of recent inhabitants, but the island hadn't been in, inhabited for decades. But the pilot who flew over it didn't realise this at the time. So maybe he just didn't realise the importance of what he was actually seeing. And they could have been living as castaways on the island. They could have been. But let's, let's just think about what the definition of inhabited is, because... In two hours, or in, in, in hours or days, Amelia Earhart couldn't make an island look like it's been inhabited. She could put a fire on it and yeah. a bed. She's not going to have a fucking, like, shack. I don't think there was Monkey or butler anything. or anything. Exactly. So inhabited is a strong word. Someone went fishing and had a fire there. That's... But also, don't you think it's worth looking at? Like, send well, one yeah. of the boats over... Just, well, yeah, that is stupid, like, but you would have thought she'd give a signal. Well, apparently people reported hearing transmissions from Amelia pleading for help over the next week, thousands of them. And these coincided at times where there was a low tide. So it might have been if the plane had crashed in this lagoon or had crashed nearby like on the shoreline or somewhere, it may have been that the plane was partially submerged in water and then when the tide went out, she was able to get to it. Just saying it, it happened to coincide with the times so and the tide And, and, and the, the, the radio remained working while submerged yeah, underwater. Yeah, I know. It's just a By seawater. Um, one of the people was Betty Clink who was in Florida, and she claimed to hear Amelia on her ham radio. Now, she was like 16, but she got her dad in to listen, and her dad was like, oh, you know, it's nothing. Listened again, and it kept coming through. And they'd actually set up long-range equipment, so that they and they were regularly picking up radio transmissions around the world. This sounded a bit weird at first, but you've got to remember, when 1937, radio was like the best social media they had. <laughs> you know, so it's not, it wasn't uncommon for people to invest in better radio equipment and yeah, pick but why up. Would, why would the military not pick up on these and civilians would? Well, apparently loads of people picked up on it and loads of people reported transmissions yeah, saying I the can, same sort of thing. This you know is Amelia problem- Earhart, please help me. And was it in the news by this point? Probably in America. Mm. Yeah. So all you've got to do is go on ham radio and say, I'm Amelia Earhart. Well, the Coast Guard was like, we're getting these from all over the world, so they're going to be false. But that's not necessarily true because if they can pick up radio in Florida from all over the world, then all over the world can pick up radio from us or from from them. Sorry. So who's to say that some of these might not be genuine? That's... Just go and check out the nearby islands. You know. Well, they should have checked the nearby islands. But if there's thousands of these reports and it's so easily hoaxable, 
Why I'm would... not suggesting he goes all over the world to check like, them out. Well, she but... has all these means of communication to direct sources, and yet she's using the one form that goes to everyone. That makes well, no maybe sense. Maybe she didn't have direct means anymore. We don't know what happened, do we? So I find it highly if unlikely. She had just that a the, basic radio. The plane crashed, and the only thing that survived was a ham rate, like was a ham radio. None of the other radio equipment, which was in the same place. Maybe survived. that's the, maybe she was able to handhold something, and that's the only thing she she was able to take. I mean, maybe or maybe someone thought it'd be funny to pretend to be Amelia Earhart on the radio, and everyone picked up the same fucking signal. Well, apparently, I read reports saying that they were able to triangulate the signal in around the area of Gardner Island, and there was other islands around it. So, I just feel like. Like, just send a boat over and have a look at the time. Oh, yeah, but we can't do that now, so. No, but it's just frustrating. I mean, it's one woman at the end of the day. Money, cost, risk. Yeah, but like anything else, you want to know what happened. You want to learn from it. You want to understand. I don't think there was much to learn from a... I have spent 35 years of my life never needing to know how to fly (laughs) a Lockheed Martin, whatever it is, across... No, but you've used... Planes and taking advantage of people. Well, when I say taking advantage, I mean I don't mean. Yeah, but it's again. It's got to be like what are they going to learn from this? It wasn't. Uh, no one's going to do what she was doing with the plane. It's not going to be a. a re- it's not going to be recreated at any point. She took a. Well, pl- it was eventually. Someone did do it, and then we got better and better planes to well, where we, we are a, today. Yeah, spending the equivalent of billions trying to find one human being as yeah, horrible. About Four million. It, it that makes no sense. We gave up on 300 people with MH370. You don't think we're going to give up on one woman? Just, I'm sorry, but like, it wasn't like it was mandatory. It wasn't military service. It was a, it was a jolly that she endeavoured on herself. Well, the 19- amount of effort we should go into finding her is limited. I mean, we do, I don't know that we were ever going to really stop. No, but what I mean <laughs> is is that like, from a government point of yeah, view... Yeah, uh, I know. And like an economic point of view, you have to stop. It's not well, three hundred people. It's not the pro- it's not the president. It's someone that was trying to set. Even a if si- it's the president, at some point you yeah, got to stop. It's someone trying to set a silly record that they didn't have to do. So if I'm like in charge, I'll look. I'll try and find them. But after a while, I'm going to go. Yeah, gone. I just feel like they should have gone to that island and just ruled that out. And then you know, Why? I don't expect you to keep looking in the sea forever. But play stupid game, win stupid prizes. <laughs> you really don't think this was a big deal. No. But it's, it's flights like that. It's people like that that pushed the boundaries that led us to where we are today in science. Well, no. Or aviation. No, it's the ones that landed that did. No, I think people learned from what she did. Yeah, learned not to take that plane on that journey. Not even just that plane, about radio communications well, and yeah, but, the importance of maps being correct. <laughs> but if you tell me that someone's gone out in a plane that's underdeveloped, that's not modern, with no GPS, that's had to refuel... Dozens and dozens of times that in the past has had problems covering even a short distance. Yeah. And they did it for no other reason than fame. Don't get don't get it twisted. She wasn't out there like, oh, I'm going to fly a plane for the benefit of everyone. No, she loved it. She loved being a She did love it, but I, I do think fine, it was we like an achievement not, still. Yeah, but she wasn't doing it for the betterment of man. She was doing it for the betterment of Amelia Earhart, which is fine. I don't but, know. I think it bettered the world to have a female pilot pushing the boundaries like that. Co- yeah, but coincidence to her goal. It, it's, they run side by side. I mean, I suppose you could argue she, she was already could, pushing the boundaries and she was already doing she great things. She could become a regular there. pilot and done yeah. regular things and push the boundaries, but she wanted to be the first. She I don't wanted know to be that we best. should disencourage wanting to be the best at something. No, but I'm saying is is that if you set out on a goal like that and, cr- and fail miserably, like, well, yeah, the odds were against you, you fool. All right, well, in 1939 like or 1940... Richard 19- Branson tried to go around the world in a balloon and failed. Yeah, but everyone mm. thought the same thing about him. This is great. Like, like, he hasn't advanced ballooning in any way, has he? He was doing it for his own... But that's a bit of a weird one, because hot air balloons were like, they're a bit of a dead thing now, aren't they? Like, you don't see as many of them as you used to. I know they still exist, and people still go in hot air balloon rides. And I'm, well, well, who wants a mode of transport that you can't than... direct? Yeah, it is weird. I don't, I mean... Go up and see the, the like, countryside, fine, but as a mode of transport, it's fucking useless. Yeah. When, when are you going to be to America? Well, I've got to hope the wind gets me there. <laughs> okay, so in 1939 or 1940, Gerald Gallagher, a British colonial officer, found the remains of a campsite and a partial human skeleton on Gardner Island. But when a doctor took a look at the bones, he determined that they were from a short, stocky European descent male, so neither Fred nor Amelia, and decided, well, that, you know, these are, we don't know who this is, and that he threw him away. Just well, threw him away, away a bit much, but 
Yeah. I mean, he could have kept them, you know, preserve history. Yeah. The, we, like before planes, we had boats and we had people that adventured in boats. Yes, that, it's possible they washed up. I get that. Or, or but, marooned or whatever. We have no evidence that, that is Amelia Earhart or has anything to do with her. Well, many years later, the International Group for Historical Aircraft Recovery, or TIGER, examined the findings of Dr. Hoodless, the guy who threw the bones away. And although, of course, they couldn't examine the bones themselves, they examined what he wrote down about them. And with the updated technology and knowledge that they've got today of human skeletons, they determined that it could have been a short man or a tall woman. And no. everyone was in agreement that Amelia was a tall woman at five foot eight. No. I no. Don't, I don't think no. I mean, you're not the expert here. They are. No, they're not. They're an expert in planes. I'm not an expert in biology. I don't give a shit what they say about... I'm sorry, but they, they, the man didn't look at it and go, short, that must be a man. Like, that must be a short man. He might have. No, because we are fundamentally different. Our, our skeletons. It is very difficult to get that wrong, even at that time. It wasn't a full skeleton either. Yeah, but there are differences. Sorry. But there are. Underneath our skin, there are differences. No, I get that. So it's very unlikely... That the guy looking at the bones... But you don't know what bones he had. They don't have bones. They're just looking at what he wrote. <laughs> and they're the better, going to be the better authority because they want it to be Amelia Earhart. I well, don't. They said it could have been. They said it could have been Amelia Earhart. Good for them. I'm saying that it's most likely a small man because a, 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 like the male, a male and female bones are different. And I'd like to yeah, think... But how that, much did we know about them in 1937? A lot. Okay. Enough. To be able to go man, woman. Bear in mind, we were still putting people's brains out of their noses in the 1960s. Yeah, but doctors change. The practices change. How bone bones don't yeah, how change. How you understand them, Mike. Not as simple. Like, we've been doing archaeology for hundreds of years at this point. We've gotten to the point where we can go man, woman. I just think it's very unlikely. So you trust the doctor in 1937 rather than, and I, I'm not I'm sure group, they got an actual, no, I'm sure they got an actual doctor to look at it. Then a group of people who have a vested interest in that being Amelia Earhart, because they'll be the ones that found Amelia Earhart and they'll be the famous ones. Yes, I believe the See, fucking no, doctor. No, no, they still can't prove it's Amelia Earhart, yeah, so but, they're not going to get any glory from it. But they're saying it could have been. And their explanation for why it was only a partial skeleton and and why they didn't have Fred was coconut crabs. <laughs> now, coconut crabs can break open coconuts, so they're very strong. They they can eat humans, or they would have carried away the bones. Convenient. So she could have been eaten by crabs. Convenient, that real fucking convenient. Why, though? They're there. They exist. We can still go and see the coconut crabs. Uh, let me just hop on YouTube and find videos of coconut crabs dismembering human beings. Well, no, because we wouldn't stand by and watch, would we? Well, if they're, like, well... But we know they're strong enough to do it. Yeah, so it's a bear, but he's not like they didn't do it. Bears have killed humans. Yeah, and then covered up the and then and then. I don't think the coconuts crabs are covering up the evidence in that way. I just think they're just uh, yeah. And so, how many things have to align for this theory to pan but out? But we know that animals move bones, right? So that uh, still happens, not with crabs, just in general in the wild. Amelia Earhart has crashed her plane, not on the island, near it. Managed to swim there, survive for a few days, get some radio signal messages out. Like stuck, left signs of habitation has then died, and then some crabs have come along, and it hurt not not just her, Fred's entire body, and then dragged some, but not all, well, for, for some know, Fred, for some particular reason. For they've for dragged. All we know. Let me finish. <laughs> they've dragged some, but not all of the bones into the sea, so some have remained. Then a scientist has come along and found these bones, analysed them, and got it wrong. And fifty years later, some bloke has gone, "Yeah, that's Amelia Earhart." That, so that to you is a reasonable way for that to go down, is it? That's the way. Yes. That's reasonable, is yes. it? Yes. There's like so there couldn't be a much simpler explanation than that. Than maybe she just fl plopped in the sea. I don't think it's that complicated that she made her way to this island. There's a lot that has to line up. Like I said, like how how big is this island? Gardner Island. Oh, it's much bigger than Howland Island. I don't know if the exact length. It's small though, Gardner Island. It is small, yeah. In a massive sea. So the chance yeah. that she landed anywhere near that island are minimal. Mm. The chance that she survived the crane crash with barely any safety equipment, minimal. The fact, the, the chance she survived the ocean and swam to the island, minimal. Possible though. Yeah, possible that she was abducted by aliens, but... Ah! Uh, yeah, they say that, but there's no evidence <laughs> of that either. This is what I mean, this isn't a mystery. Oh, well, they also found a sextant box, a navigational tool. Do we still use those? Yeah. Are they electronic now? No. Oh. We use them when, for non, when electronic electricity fails us. Well, uh, that 
you know, they could have been from Amelia's plane. It was around the time, but of course it could also have been from any number of... Could have washed up there. Yeah. Uh, there's also been a lot of talk about a bit of aluminium found on the island. It was riveted aircraft aluminium, and it was thought to be from Amelia's plane, but others have since said no, including the manufacturer of the plane. However, he did admit, the manufacturer of the plane, or the spokesperson on behalf of the manufacturer of the plane, that if Amelia's plane was repaired at any of the stops for any reason, it is a piece of metal that they would like put near the tail. So it could have been from Amelia's plane, but it wasn't definitely from Amelia's plane. Cool. Could have been from any other number of planes <laughs> that have crashed in that region. In 2002 to 2017, so 15 years, uh, a company called Nauticos searched 2,000 square nautical miles using, and they used sonar mapping, but they were still unable to find any evidence of the plane. So? They looked in the wrong place. What 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 is what is what is this evidence of? I just thought that was interesting that we're still looking for it for fifteen years. We looked for fifteen years. What a waste of fucking time that was. I do feel like they could have been looking for MH370. There are, there, like, this <laughs> or like any number of what, other planes. What what were they gonna find? Like, oh we found it. Right. You've got no it's not gonna it's not gonna add any evidence, anything to the story. I'm like really surprised you're not like more interested in this though, because it is just like a it, what is the like to me a mystery is something that has multiple explanations that that defies the way a mind work a, a plane in the 1930s crashing trying to undertake something that most people thought was too difficult to do but she'd nearly done it so she'd done all the hard parts this was supposed to be the so? easy bit planes don't behave the way you want them to you don't like, you don't get to decide at what bit your plane crashes well what if she was a spy and what information did she steal? What if she wasn't a very successful spy? <laughs> so there was a theory, but about 800 nautical miles away, there was the Marshall Islands, and people thought that she might have landed there, maybe by accident or maybe on purpose, to spy on the Japanese. <laughs> now, Marshall Islands at the time were Japanese territory. They wouldn't notice her. She would, she'd would. she really fit in, <laughs> yeah. being the only female to ever fly a plane. Maybe she was sent there to see what they were up to, and she'd be like, oh, I've crashed, and then... Like, but firstly, they're just going to kill her. Well, yeah, I mean, so that's like part one of this particular theory. Like, so they're just going to kill her. They might have just killed her on site. No, 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 they might, no, might. <laughs> During World War II, a white American woman lands near them and goes, Oh, I need help. They just shoot her. They don't go, Oh, actually. Well, they also thought maybe she might have imprisoned her for a while. But I feel like, wouldn't the Japanese have been more vocal about that? Wouldn't they have been like, we've got Amelia Earhart. They wouldn't have just like quietly and silently not told anyone that they've imprisoned someone. Yeah, these are the people, that, the point these are the people that bombed Pearl Harbor. That was four years later. But subtlety is not their strong suit. <laughs> they would have just killed the fucking bitch and let them know they've done it. Well, others believe that they were imprisoned until the war was over and then they returned to America under assumed names. But why? Why would they need to come back under an assumed name? Because Let's assume for a minute that was true. Why would they have to come back under an assumed name and not just as Amelia Earhart? Well, maybe Amelia Earhart to hide from, like, the, the fame. But Fred? No. Fred doesn't need an assumed name because <laughs> I've only just learned that Fred existed. They were also both married. So... There was a th there was this theory as well that Amelia was actually a woman called Irene Cragmile who was later married to become Irene Bolam. And Irene was like outraged by this. And she was like, no, like, leave me alone. I'm not her. And then some guy even wrote a book to say like, this is Amelia Earhart. And she sued the publisher and was like, you really need to leave me alone. There's no resemblance at all. And Irene only died in 1982 and she had kids. So you would be able to today, you wouldn't have been able to prove it at the time, but today you would be able to prove without a shadow of a doubt that there's no ancestry between her and Amelia Earhart. No, I don't think anyone really believes it now, but they did at the time. But like, why would she just come back and get married to someone else? Why wouldn't she come back and be like, husband, I'm home? Even though he got married 18 months after she disappeared. So that would have been an awkward conversation if she did. <laughs> well, he was probably pissed off. Well, he assumed that she died, like most of the rest of the world. See, that's the thing. There's a small window of crackpots. Everyone else is like me and accepted that he she... did spend a lot of money looking for her. Of course, you would. Oh, I'd look for you, but I wouldn't mean I'd be like, <laughs> right, we need, right, now we need to look on the moon because she could have been. Can like, you imagine me flying solo around the world? <laughs> no, but like, there's going to be a point where you're like, well, she's dead. And most people were like, well, like, it's not a mystery. There's a question. There's a que The only question is, where did she die? Well, in 1944, an army sergeant named Thomas Devine claimed he found a hangar guarded by US Marines with Amelia's plane inside on the island of Saipan which was a formerly settled Japanese island, but recently liberated. Yeah. Um, they claimed the plane was then destroyed. Why would you even keep it for so long if you were trying to hide it? Like, why? No, it's like these people that claim that they see a UFO inside of Area 51. 
like they're going to get to the point where they've got a fucking you a flying saucer in a hangar, and someone's going to leave the door open by accident <laughs> for some asshole to see. Well, there was also the photo. So there was a retired government investigator called Les Kinney who found a photo in the National Archives from the island uh, appearing to show Amelia and Fred. And I'll put the photo on the blog, but like, honestly, it's it's not clear. It could be any two white people, like Amelia and Fred, a white woman and a white man, clearly, but there's no, you can't really see any other facial features. But later on, two bloggers, like recent, in more recent times, obviously, found the photo in a book that was published in 1935. So even though everyone was always in agreement this photo was genuine, it was in 1935, so it was two years before they disappeared. So even if it was Amelia and Fred, and they happened to fly there anyway, it, it wasn't, there's no conspiracy because it was before they went missing. So all, all the conspiracy and all the mystery is conjured up. But it was enough to fuel. No one this likes whole theory, a hero failing. No one likes losing someone as great as like, Amelia Earhart was. So they want it to be a mystery. They maybe we didn't lose her. Maybe we we lost her to well, we didn't. Maybe we lost her, but maybe we lost her to an alien race who thought she was so brilliant. They wanted to understand what she was doing and took her with them. So don't know what a- they did with Fred. So an alien race uh-huh. got got to our planet by traveling through space. Mm-hmm. And then was so enamoured yeah. by a woman driving a prop plane. Yeah. And her abilities, come Correct. on. Correct. <laughs> well, some people thought that she might have been in collusion with the US government. So like they all had some sort of weird deal. Maybe she wanted to go to outer space. Maybe they asked her to take her. Maybe the government were like aliens. Just just favour. Could you just pop down and take Amelia? Mm, maybe, like, maybe. She'll the, be in the in the air on this day. The only conspiracy. I could see happening, and I don't think it did at all. There's no evidence for it, but like all these wacky ones about stuff like that. The only other thing I can think of is men in the aircraft industry taking exception to there being a woman and sabotaging her plane. But there's no evidence of that, and don't for a second think I'm suggesting that. I'm just saying that of all these wild claims, they're not even making the the most the more legitimate claims. They're like sabotage should come up before aliens. Well, I mean, and there was the mole people that took it to Hollow Earth. I mean, well, of course they did that, but that was only after she crashed. To be honest, I didn't spend a lot of time looking into aliens or mole people because I feel like we've done Hollow Earth to death and I just don't know that I believe in it. No. I struggle uh, with Hollow Earth. <laughs> look, yeah, it's an extremely sad thing. The woman deserves to be remembered, but... Huge, she did do a lot of good. Huge um, mystery, this isn't. I think it is a bit of a mystery. In 1939, in January, she was declared legally dead 18 months after she went missing. What she did for women at the time was mega. And she's got many a museum, school and monument named after her. They, I do think they searched like as best they could considering it was 1937. But also, like, I do think they should have just maybe gone to that Gardner Island and had a quick look. I mean, maybe mistakes were made, but it doesn't change the outcome. It's change- true for a lot of what we do, though, isn't it? A lot of these like missing people and stuff like that, there's always a mistake made. But it doesn't, if only it, one person this, looked at one It doesn't time, change like, the outcome for Amelia, though. She no, I mean, it's too late now, isn't she, it? I mean, And she probably would have been dead by the time we got to that island anyway. She'd be like well over 100 at this point. Like, because so. she'd crashed a plane. She had no water, no food. She was in a very vulnerable situation, even if she was on that island. So chances of her survival were weak. And you really just think it's as straightforward as she crashed into the sea. I really think the island thing has merit. There's no evidence of it being Amelia. There's evidence of it being a human being. So you start ruling out the however billion people that are on the planet and I will see you in a little while then. Women weren't. Men were doing a lot of it. We, we discovered how dang- how much how good a weapon they were in World War One. So we were like well on the plane thing by that point. We were like, yes. Well, we I suppose if you consider things. how long we've been sailing for as well mm-hmm, the and sailing that- successfully. Mm-hmm. And exploring and losing ships. The chance of that being Amelia oh. versus anyone else that was sat, the hundreds of thousands of people that would have been in that area could have even been like a local person. But there was no local people. That island had no one living on it. It wasn't. There wasn't yeah, but there's a- islands nearby where people can, believe it or not, non Western people make boats too. <laughs> Oh, I know. I just... Mm. It could be anything. That's what I mean. Like, you can't go, ah, oh, it's Amelia because it's in the right area. To me, it just, I don't know, the fact that it was on the same navigational line, that she was experienced enough to start to look for land. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know that she just went into the sea. But I do believe that if she did just go into the sea, I understand why we haven't found her based on all my other knowledge of me yeah, getting there's frustrated. There's no need for a conspiracy stuff. here because that... It isn't called for. So what do you think happened to her, just in the sea? Yeah, in the sea, mate. Right, she... I think she was eaten by crabs. Well, fine. Mystery News. 
So I want to talk about a man that's found a door that's blocked off in his new house. So he'd been living there a few weeks and he noticed he moved some stuff in the basement and he found a door that had been blocked off. Now you're thinking, okay, right, well, that's weird. But what's behind the door? He doesn't want to open it. How can you live like this? I don't know. I'd be taking an axe to that motherfucker straight yeah. away. Like, he says that he's, been, he's watched too many horror films to open and find out what's behind that door. He said that his dogs are afraid of it and don't want to go near it. And therefore, he doesn't want to open it. Now, this doesn't sound like the strongest mystery news we've ever had in the sense that this is it. This is my whole article. But I just, I, I, this has been bothering me for the last three days. How could you not open the door? What if there's someone living the other side of it and they can now just walk it? You've, you've removed the thing that was blocking it. And also, why did the people that lived there before you feel the need to block it off in the first place? Where was this? America? No, it was in the UK. Oh, okay. Where I have to say, we don't have all that many basements. So like, no, what is down there? I think we used to have a lot, like there's a lot of shady things that have happened in history and a lot of reasons for people to want secret entrances and tunnels. So. Okay, so say there's a tunnel on the other side of that door. Yeah, why would you Don't want you to Don't need know? to know that. It's mean, it over pretty fucking fast. Now well, you've just no, got like... Like, like, you, like places are riddled with these things, like towns and stuff, because there used to be smugglers and old school criminals. And then there's the whole Shanghaiing people thing that went on where you could get people drunk, sneak them out, sell them to someone on a boat and make money off of them. And like they ended up in Shanghai, like wake up in Shanghai. And you don't want to know if that's now underneath your house. Oh, I do. I don't know why you're acting like this is me. <laughs> it just really bothers me. I feel like we should, someone should force him to open that door. Uh, I mean, can't do that. And it's not the first time this has happened. Lots of people find lots of weird stuff in their house, like cupboards they didn't know existed after they'd lived there for 10 years and stuff like that. But a door that you're refusing to open, I just don't know how long you can go on like this. And I will keep you updated because I'm now transfixed I found his social media and if he ever opens the door I'll let you know why he finds it but like I just can't imagine to me it's a portal to hell okay like it's in a basement you'd you'd seal it off for sure yeah the devil's found for famed for using doors he is like a very basement centred type devil though isn't he or just a door to what though you can't have just a door another part of his basement that's just got some crap in it it could be se- like a body in so there. They haven't sealed it off. They've just locked a door. No, they like literally like covered it over with stuff. Like, it, like it's a mystery, but uh, probably some shit and some rat poop. I can't believe this doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me. Let me know if you'd open the door. <laughs> I'd open the door, but like, I'm just going to move on with my life and not think about it again. I think for me, it would depend what's the other side of it. And also, why don't the dogs want to go through it? There's no evidence of that. They can't go through it. Well, he Shut said up. that. He said that they were afraid of it. He's afraid of it. He can't, like, he can't be trusted. <laughs> I don't know. He needs to open the fucking door. He needs to strap on a pair. Also, there's a part of me that thinks maybe he doesn't need to open the door. He just needs to cement it over right now and keep the other side of it, whatever is the other side of it. You either need to cover it back over or you need to open it and find out what you're dealing with. Carefully. I mean, it could have like asbestos and harmful shit in it that has nothing to do with the devil. Fine, not pay someone out. to do it. But, but like... yeah, of course I'd open the door. Mystery news. You can read more about Amelia and her final flight and flight path, the journey that she took on our blog at mysteryoflifepodcast.co.uk and you can follow us on Instagram at the mystery of life pod. And we'll be back next week. Goodbye. Bye.